Hi everyone and welcome to another sewing vlog. Today I'm doing a sew along and review of the Jacques Raincoat by I Am Patterns. This one was a really challenging project for me but I think the result was worth it so let's get started. So this project was on my to make list for a long time. I've had the pattern and fabric in my stash for probably over two years now. And it's a little late in the year now for a raincoat as it's already snowed here, but I finally decided to get around to making it. For my main fabric, I'm using Merchant & Mills Dry Oil Skin, which I purchased from Simplify Fabric. And then for the lining, I had two options, a charcoal cotton or a black oil skin barrier lining. And I ended up going for the charcoal cotton because I realized that I don't actually need the barrier lining for a dry oil skin. It's meant for an actual oil skin. So I'm saving that for something else. There are quite a few notions that you need for this jacket. And I got pretty much everything from Sewing Supply Depot, which is an online store based in Ontario. I have a two-way zipper, a drawstring cord for the hood, as well as two cord stoppers, and then some snaps and grommets in an antique brass finish. The first thing I'm doing is reading through the pattern instructions, and this is something that I always do before cutting into my pattern or fabric, just to get a sense of what I'm doing and if there are any changes that I want to make. I'm making the long view of the coat in a size 44, and I also decided to change out the patch pockets for welt pockets, which was really intimidating for me actually because I've never done welt pockets before. So that was probably a big reason why I took so long to get around to making this project. I got the printed version of this pattern and it came on one sheet with some of the pieces overlapping. So it does need to be traced out, which is something that I do for all of my printed patterns anyway to keep them in case I want to make another size or something like that in the future. One thing I did find strange is that the pattern is only given for the medium length view jacket. So if you want to make the shorter or longer version, you have to add or subtract length on several of the pieces yourself which wasn't a huge deal, it's just not something that I've seen in a pattern before, and it does introduce some more room for error. But then again, this pattern isn't really for beginners, so hopefully anyone attempting this one wouldn't have any trouble making those adjustments. So I'm just tracing out my pattern pieces and adding length where I need to, and making sure that I'm transferring all of the markings as well. Before cutting into my fabric, I also took some time to draft and sew up a test of my welt pocket. For help with drafting this, I followed the tutorial from the Shapes of Fabric blog, and it was really helpful, so I'll link that in the description box below. I ended up designing a single welt pocket with a flap, which I will close with one snap. Then I started cutting out all of my pieces. The dry oilskin fabric couldn't be washed, as it would take away the water repellent finish, so I just tried to iron it as best I could on the lowest setting to get all of the kinks out. This fabric had been folded in my stash for, like I said, over two years, so the creases were pretty heavy. Um, if you ever get fabric like this, I would say it's best to store it rolled instead of folded so that it doesn't form creases like this. To save on tracing paper, I traced out my main pattern pieces with markings for the cutting lines for the lining instead of making two separate pattern pieces, and then just folded the pattern piece back to cut along those lines. Finally, before I started sewing, I transferred all of my markings using my tracing wheel and transfer paper, and then ironed on all of my fusible interfacing, which didn't actually stick very well, I think because of the treated nature of the fabric but it's really important to use interfacing on all of the places where the snaps will go to add stability and durability. I'm starting by making the welt pockets on the front pieces of my main garment. And again, I'll leave the tutorial that I followed down in the description box below if you'd like to take a look at that. For the flap, I first stitched the pieces with right sides together, trimmed the seam allowance and turned it right side out, and then top stitched along the edge at the width of my presser foot.
For the pocket bag, there's one larger pocket piece and one smaller one. The larger one goes on top while the smaller one goes on the bottom so that when both pieces are folded down, the edges line up with one another. And I didn't have to worry about finishing any of the edges here as the pocket's going to be enclosed by the jacket lining later on the inside. I think it's always a good thing to challenge yourself with learning new skills. I was definitely intimidated by doing my first welt pocket because it seemed complicated and I'd never done one before, but now that I've done it a few times, it seems so much more approachable and I feel like I accomplished something and learned a new skill. So just don't be afraid to take on something challenging or that you don't know how to do because that's all part of the learning process. For the snaps, I realized later on that I had actually purchased magnetic closures instead of snap closures, which weren't as appropriate for this project, I felt, so I did a quick run to my local fabric store and picked up a snap kit. I marked where I wanted to place them using my tailor's chalk and then opened a small hole using my seam ripper, and then I hammered both the top and bottom snap into place, making sure that I had a block of wood underneath to protect the surface of my work table. With the pockets out of the way, it was time to go ahead and assemble the main garment and the lining. So I started by sewing the facing pieces onto the lining at the center fronts. For the most part while making this project, I just did finger pressing instead of using my iron as I didn't want to do anything to the water repellent finish of the fabric. I then attached the back to the front pieces at the shoulders and side seams for both the outer garment and the lining. And I did this step before doing the zipper so that I could line up the zipper exactly along the front pieces and wouldn't risk it being off slightly after I sewed the shoulder seams. Thank you. 
The original zipper foot that came with my machine is actually a bit too wide at the back, which makes it kind of useless for doing zippers because you really need a narrow foot. So I got a new slimmer foot for my machine, which works perfectly. And I just need to change the position of my needle to the left or right, depending on which side of the zipper I'm sewing. And it allows me to stitch very close to the teeth. After the zipper, I moved on to doing the sleeves, and I made sure to leave a gap in one of the sleeve linings per the instructions, which will be used for turning the garment right side out later, but as you'll see, I actually ended up doing this a little bit differently. The instructions also say to do a line of easing stitching along the sleeve head so that it's easier to fit into the arm side, but you don't actually need to do this, and I usually just ease it into place with pins and my fingers while I'm sewing. And this is how I was taught to do it in my pattern making course, so it's a little bit more finicky, but I think it's a good skill to learn that also saves some time. Before I could put everything together, I also needed to make the hood, and it's done very similar to the rest of the garment with a facing that attaches to the lining. So first I added interfacing to the wrong side where the grommets were going to be placed, and installed those, which was pretty much the same process as how I did the snaps. Then I stitched the lining to the hood and threaded the cord through the grommets, making sure it was pinned out of the way towards the front before top stitching the channel closed. So then it was time to put the garment and the lining together and then bag out the lining. I started by attaching the hood to the top of the garment along the neckline with right sides together. And then I laid the lining on top again with right sides together and matched up all of the edges along the center, front and the neckline. At this part I got really confused because the facing is much shorter than the rest of the lining and the instructions tell you to stitch it in a sort of staggered way, which I had never seen before. So I posted a story about it on Instagram and thankfully some very helpful people came to my rescue and shared their guidance with me on how and why this is done. There's a really useful video tutorial which I'll link on screen and in the description box below if you want to learn more about this technique. But essentially what it does is allows for some bagginess in the lining to give it more movement against the body instead of it being fully tight against the outer garment. And if you take a look at some professionally tailored jackets or a blazer or something that you have in your closet that has a lining, you'll probably see this technique used. So that was really cool because I feel like it gives this coat a much more professional finish. And as you can probably tell from this footage, stitching everything together was actually quite a lot of work. While I was stitching around the garment through all of the layers, I actually ended up bending three of my machine needles. And I don't know how it happened. After the first needle bent, I switched over to my heavy duty needles, which I probably should have been using from the beginning. And it still bent two of those. I thought I had maybe even broken my machine or something was wrong with the timing, but I tried a third heavy duty needle and it seemed to finally work fine, so thankfully I was able to keep going. Now the instructions say to turn the coat right side out at this point through the opening that you left in the sleeve lining, and then hand stitch the sleeve lining to the garment. 
However, I decided to use a method that I learned while making the paper cut patterns Nova Coat and instead attached the sleeve linings before turning the lining out. In that method, the gap in the lining is left in the body and not in the sleeve, so I ended up closing the sleeve gap and ripped the seam in the body a little, backstitching at each end to reinforce the hole that I made. Um, just because I wasn't sure if I would be able to turn it out through the sleeve using this method and I was having too much trouble visualizing it and doing all of the mental gymnastics. If you've ever bagged out a lining, you probably know that it just seems like it happens like magic. Um, so I just wanted to be safe and make sure that I would be able to turn it right side out. So I carefully pulled the garment right side out through the hole in the lining. And at this stage, it's kind of weird, but it always feels to me like the jacket is like being born, <laughs> which is a weird way to think about it. But if you've ever done this, you might know what I mean. Um, and then I just pressed out the corners, making sure that they were really nice and sharp. And you'll also see that I have some pins down one side of the garment, which is just keeping my interfacing in place um, where I'm gonna put the snaps later. After that I was able to move on to just doing the finishing touches. So first I had to top stitch the hems at the bottom of the garment and the sleeves. And I did this from the inside just to make sure I wasn't catching the lining at all. And then I also top stitched all the way around the front of the garment and this gave it such a nice finish. The final step was to install the placket and the snaps. So I lined up the raw edge of the placket with my line of top stitching and stitched it at one centimeter, then trimmed the seam allowance, folded it over towards the center front and top stitched it again to enclose the raw seam. For the snaps, I used eight down the front in total and spaced them out at about 11 centimeters. And in the end, I kind of wish I had done fewer snaps or maybe only done them for the top two thirds of the jacket or something and kind of left them off the bottom as I feel like it looks a little bit busy, but there's no going back now as the holes have been made. So I'm going to just leave it as it is. I did one last check to make sure that everything was lying flat and in the right place and then I hand stitched the gap in the lining closed and I'm not very good at doing this so I think I need to watch some videos about how to do hand stitching well but at least it's on the inside and it's never going to be seen. Plus I kind of like those little quirks that make it easy to tell that something was made by hand. Finally, I slid the cord stoppers onto the drawstring and then added a label, which is something I probably should have done before attaching the lining, but I honestly just always forget to do this until the end. But it's not very noticeable from the right side, especially with the hood down. And then with that, my jacket was finally complete.
I'm so happy with how this jacket turned out. It was a lot of work, but it was definitely worth it. It feels very sturdy and warm, and I think the size is just right. I can layer a good size sweater underneath it and still not feel too restricted in my movement. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please don't forget to like it and also subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more like this in the future. Thanks for watching!